stress is when a person shows by difficulties in personal relationships and worrisome bodily responses that he or she is having a struggle and cannot cope with felt or perceived difficulties. Many children face not just one type of stress, but clusters of stress factors like separation, illness, divorce, and developmental challenges. And some face even worse stressors such as poverty, abuse, and abandonment. Caring for children who are experiencing stress can be challenging, as well as conjure up anxieties and fears. Where do we find support? Whenever you have a meeting um, with your coworkers or people in other rooms who are in the same situation that you are, or with your administration or a supervisor, to bring that up. I think it's, it's something, if you're really feeling that, and I have really felt that, and if you feel you can't get out of that, it's time to talk to a peer or a coworker, uh, someone in your room or someone who's working with a similar age group in another room, talk to them about what's going on and how you're feeling and what they do. Get ideas from other people uh, about how to handle the stress of what, of the real stress that there is, especially. Uh, in a room with young children. What if we were to consider looking at stress through a different lens, finding strength and empowerment as opposed to fear or worry? It's a compliment if the child falls apart when his parent leaves and he falls apart on the floor right by you. You can feel that you have received a great compliment. This child is saying, you're the person that I can fall apart in front of and I'll still be safe. There isn't a greater compliment that a child can give you than I trust you to keep me safe even when I'm, you know, I'm not lovable and, and you will still love me. That's a compliment to a caregiver. We know that stress in a child's life may bring behavioral changes and challenges. Stress can show up physically, mentally, behaviorally and socially. All behavior of all creatures on the earth is a communication. It means something. It means something. It's a communication, that behavior. Even the negative behaviors are a communication. And sometimes it's valuable to ask ourselves, you know, why did that happen? And frequently the answer is, he did it for no reason. He walked right past her and pulled her hair. There was no reason at all that he did that. Well, there's no reason that you could see. You couldn't see the reason right. Is it a grown-up reason? No way. It's not a grown-up reason. Was it a thinking reason? Maybe not. Some could be something from inside the child. It probably was something from inside the child. Or something that the child saw that you didn't see. And it's okay, that's all right, but you can't say to yourself, um, he does that for no reason. So how do we identify stress in children? Here are some things to look for. Do symptoms and behaviors last a long time and occur often? Do symptoms and behaviors show in many settings or just one area with one person? Do symptoms and behaviors cause a child not to function, be distressed, or both? Does the child have positive attachments with at least one adult? Do you see the child responding to other children and emotions? In the book, Finding Your Child's Strengths, Jennifer Fox explores how developing children's strengths produce the resilience needed to handle setbacks, stress, and challenges. Parents need to hear some of the other things their child did. You know, tell them, oh, you know, he played in the sandbox and, and then he ran around the yard and he was so funny. Or um, your child built a tower and knocked it over ten times. You wouldn't believe how persistent he was with those blocks. Or there's always something that, that the child did that you can talk about. Focusing on children's strengths as well as our own relates to what we know from research on resiliency. Early success in school related to the effect of care, positive homeschool connections, and effective classroom practices 
appears to be a key segue to resilience. Children are tuned in to our intentions. So if you really do say to yourself, I want to have a relationship with this child, I'm just going to at least nod and smile at him. I'm going to go by and touch him and say hi. You know, and that's it, if that's the most you can do. It's the beginning. So what do you learn in your moments of stress? What will the children take away from it? How can you bring optimism to stress? It's wonderful when our true strengths find a way of shining through the stress.